thank you everyone for coming back to my channel or if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And I have a very fun video for you today. I am joined by two friends, Taylor and Morgan. Taylor has a booktube channel, uh, The Babbling Bee. And Morgan, I've just roped into this because she is so much fun. <laughs> And we have gotten to know each other through the comment section and on Instagram and some book club, uh, like literary parlor book club things that we have attended together. And it's been a lot of fun getting to know both Taylor and Morgan. Um, and Taylor brought a certain phrase to my attention. Um, and I just really latched on to it and wanted to explore this further. Uh, because both Taylor and Morgan, like myself, just love things that are kind of just like balm to your soul. But um, Taylor, do you actually, would you like to, to talk about the specific topic we'll be kind of vibing with? Yeah, sure. So um, here, I'll hold up my first prop of the night. So this <laughs> author slash illustrator, Susan Branch, who also has an amazing, wonderful, cozy blog, if you're interested, um, introduced me to the phrase life softeners. And she described it as just like things to surround yourself with to like soften the harshness of life or like the chaos of the world. And, you know, that you should like keep as many of those things around you as you can. So mm -hmm. I've just started making it like a a lifestyle <laughs> so yeah and I had to tell Kate about it because I was like Kate will love this idea and she did obviously and I definitely did because here we are <laughs> doing an entire video dedicated to this yeah. um so we have just uh, several different categories and what we would pick for those so the first category we're going to talk about are movies and I will open us up um, for movies. We each tried to pick three. We might sneak some extra ones in there. We'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but starting with three and the first, um, I just have like an ugly blockbuster used case copy. So I won't, I'll just put a picture up and that is the 1956 film Giants with Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor. And there is something about just seeing this like young woman. I mean, she's really young I think she's 18 maybe when she gets mm -hmm. married to this Texan who comes to her family's Vermont farm to buy a horse and they fall in love at first sight and she has no idea what Texas is going to be like and then you just get to follow their life for decades so <laughs> since it is decades it's a very leisurely kind of a film um, but it's just a really interesting film in that you're following this family and very personal relationships that they have, but there's also, um, what am I trying to say? There's interesting dynamics um, in society. Uh, you know, there are Mexicans that are the house help. And so people think it's really weird that she wants to acknowledge them um, and talk to them like they are people in the house. Um, <laughs> and more, you know, other people are like, they're the hired help. You don't act like um, so it's got some interesting elements to it, but since it does have such a leisurely pacing to it, I find it incredibly cozy. And also Texas makes for a very grand setting um, for a movie. It's true. And yeah. then the next one is the 2015 live action Cinderella. <gasps> so good. It's so good. <laughs> it really is. And I just, the, actually, I do remember the first time I watched this, I was slightly underwhelmed with it because it is very, it's a bread and butter adaptation. It's very yeah. simple. And then now I appreciate that even more each time that I watch it subsequently, because it is just, it does expand on the characters in Cinderella, particularly the prince, because in the cartoon, he has like zero personality. <laughs> nothing. He's working with nothing. nothing. <laughs> So I appreciate about this one that you get an expansion on those characters, but it's also got this really elegant simplicity to it. And it's, um, I mean, the sets are beautiful and the costumes mm -hmm. and the soundtrack, just everything about Absolutely. it, I find very warm and inviting. And then lastly is the glorious 80s Anne of Green Gables Megan Fellows series. I like if if I just hear the soundtrack, I just all of the emotions <laughs> well up in me. And um 
I mean, it's filmed on Prince Edward Island, so it's got this beautiful, beautiful setting. And the character of Anne, as you know and love her from the book series, is just as lovable and mm -hmm. precocious. Um, and uh, just there's so much to love about her in this miniseries. And the actress that played Matthew and Marilla as well, I just feel like this, th there was something magic that happened with this series that really brought the characters to simply nodding. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's so good. It's lovely. Um, yeah, anything else like that I didn't list that's particularly special about this? Gilbert. Oh, yeah. Gilbert. Oh, yeah, yes. Gilbert. Oh, He's just he so spoony. Another really well done character, though, honestly. Like, every, yeah. I just feel like everyone is so well cast in that. But it does have like such a beautiful quality to it. Like even the light, yeah. like it's golden yes. and warm and beautiful and oh. uh, it's just so good. Yeah. It captures the beauty of Prince Edward Island that you feel in the books and yeah. you can actually see it translated on screen. Like you understand why Anne loves PEI, I yeah. think, in this. Yes. Yeah. It's great. Like if you can't have Lucy Maud Montgomery's beautiful nature writing about the island. And right. <laughs> that adaptation is the next best thing for sure. Yes. 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 I totally agree. Um, oh, and just the, I keep thinking about in the sequel, the Anne, um, Anne of Avonlea, the one scene where she's saying goodbye to someone at the train station. And oh, it just, it rips my heart out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, but in a good way. Feeling. Right. Yes. In a very yes. life softening way. <laughs> but in a very life softening way. It's like it's a it feels like a very like safe environment to experience that role. Yes, emotions. emotions. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. And sometimes you want a good cry. Yes. This is true. Yes. This is absolutely yes. true. All right. Yes. Um, Taylor, would you like to share your life softening movie choices? Yes. Okay. Um, if I could have cheated assiduously in this category, I totally would have. <laughs> so I was very good and I feel like I deserve a lot of like praise and commendation nice. for that. Okay, but the first one, thank you. The first one that I <laughs> is The Secret Garden. I think this adaptation is from 1993. Mm -hmm. um, it's my favorite one that I've ever seen as far as like adaptations of this book. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and it, it's another one of those movies where it's like, it's not just the story of the secret garden, like this little girl, Mary, who comes to this like mysterious Yorkshire manor house as an orphan. And she like meets all these wonderful characters and, you know, has a magical adventure. Um, but like everything in this movie from like the sets to the costumes, the score, like it's mm. all just like beautiful. It's like a visual treat everywhere that you look. And it's just so like cushy and soft. Like I put this on <laughs> when I just like want to be comforted oh, and I'm so nice. like, tired of the world. And I'm just like, whatever, I'm going to Yorkshire and I'm gonna just like, <laughs> go hang out in this. Wander evening. on the moors. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the moors. And it's not like, it's not like the Wuthering Heights kind of moors where it's right. like, don't go out there or you'll die it's like there's lambs there's love they're lovely yes exactly yeah. it's like the moors you know at their at their nicest so mm -hmm. that one like the the all creatures great and small like yorkshire kind of yeah. thing yes definitely like the nice yorkshire not, not <laughs> the which nice i love yorkshire. too obviously <laughs> like weathering heights that can definitely be life softening too but the next one that i picked for movie is <gasps> Uh, what year is this? 1995. 95. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sense and Sensibility, which this movie is like sacred to me. I'm just like, so good. The, I just can't even talk about it. I love it so much. It's <laughs> like nice and long, but it's not too long, yeah. um, which is nice. But it's just so great to get lost in. It's soft, it's beautiful, it's visually appealing. The score is beautiful. This is another one that I feel like is just so well cast, where like mm -hmm. to me, Emma Thompson, like, embodies Eleanor Dashwood's character same with Kate Winslet same with Alan Rickman um just everyone does such a good job at like portraying who they're supposed to be portraying and I just this is another one that I put on like literally just for background like mm -hmm. as soon as I put it on and hear yes. like the intro music I'm just like oh, like I can feel <laughs> life softening beginning 
to yeah. happen immediately. So nice. Yeah. And it's then like it's like sort of like King Theoden in in Two <laughs> Towers when they um when he's like all old and crusty and then yes. Gandalf comes in and he's like ah oh. yeah literally exactly that <laughs> I, all of these things that we're talking about basically have that effect on me so it's good no Gandalf necessary just watch I love it I love it <laughs> and then uh my third one, I don't have like a physical copy to show you because I just own it digitally, but it's You've Got Mail, which, oh. yeah, I mean, that's another one where it's like, it is part of the holy trinity of life softening movies where I could just put it on and instantly feel better. Um, we have a children's bookstore. We have like cozy mm-hmm. 90s fashion like all the best parts of New York, like Nora Ephron, it always shows you like yes. the cutest, most aesthetic, like charming parts of New York. Um, and it's funny. The The romance in it is super cute. Tom Hanks is adorable as always. So yeah. Perfect. I He's really perfect. Love the meal. Yeah. Especially like all the bookish references in it too. Like, no, I love it. Like Betsy Tacy and oh, all yeah. the, like classic. Wall Street books. Field and Pride yeah. and Prejudice. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I just hearing all of oh. those like bookish conversations throughout the movie is like warming to the soul. Very life softening. So fun. Oh, I love it. It's yeah. such a good movie. Yeah, I don't I honestly don't know anyone who doesn't like that movie. I've never met someone who's been like, well, that's not true. I've met people who didn't like I quoted the movie one time and people are like, What's that from? I was like, Oh, you've got mail. They're like, Yeah. Um, what to be what? fair this was like youngsters like oh. they, I was working at Starbucks and they were there yeah and um, I quoted the line from Starbucks because I just think it's hilarious because uh, inevitably someone orders a tall decaf cappuccino every time yeah. every time I work or um, that and finding I, sense of self exactly exactly or identity or whatever <laughs> defining sense of self you had it right yeah so um but anyways they're like oh I've, I've never even heard of that movie I was like um excuse me let me go in the back and scream like you've never heard of that movie yeah. I've never heard of you've got mail so are you even to be f- living a good life but I don't it's like what are you watching <laughs> yeah no yeah. but they didn't say they didn't like it they just had never seen it so I didn't trust them obviously That's but good. it could have gotten real ugly exactly yes. yeah <laughs> everything too so oh. yeah Um, those are all my movies perfect love it all right Morgan what are your three yes so my kind of I feel like I have to preface my um choices for everything just in general because um when I was thinking of life softening how I kind of internalized it was the things that I turned to over and over and over again, Mm -hmm. if I'm feeling sad, which is not necessarily the same thing, but sort of is. So some of these, I feel like probably maybe people wouldn't necessarily think of as life softening. Some of them they would, but they're all that way to me because these are things that I've watched or read or listened to gajillions of times to get me out of like a, the world sucks. Let me just get (laughs) back in a happy Morgan place. Yeah. So that's, I just wanted to say that right off the bat. So um, I was able to find physical copies of all three of these movies, shockingly. Um, The first one is The Mirror Has Two Faces, which is a, I wrote down the date, 1996. Um, I watched this with my mom way back when, and that's when I first saw it. And it's Barbara Streisand and Jeff Bridges. And it's just charming and lovely like it's this woman who is an English professor and the man is a um at oh I don't even know what college they teach at that's not important the guy is a um math professor and he (laughs) he um decides that uh intimacy physical intimacy in relationships is what ruins them So he wants a relationship that is based not at all on physical attraction, not on physical intimacy, just on, you know, true meeting of the minds. And um, also at the same time, he 
nobody ever stays in his class because he's crazy boring as a teacher. <laughs> so he has like three people every semester sign up for his class oh, and no. just because they have to. Um, and Barbara Streisand is again, an English professor and everybody signs up for her class because she's super animated and she is just, you know, like a super fun teacher. So he sits in on one of her classes um, and decides that he wants to talk to her. And then there's a couple of other things that are kind of spoiler that I won't say, but like, so anyways, so they get into this relationship where it's like, oh, this is just a meeting of the minds. Physical intimacy is not going to be involved at all. But then of course, like they actually start to fall in love and it's silly and ridiculous and a very like um, older, but still gorgeous um, Lauren Bacall plays Barbara Streisand's mother. Oh, wow. And yeah, it's just because she lives with her mother and her mother is very like overbearing and kind of ridiculous, but it's Lauren Bacall and it's just, oh, it's so good. It's great. It's a longer movie. Um, introduce it to my husband. And now anytime I'm like, mm, Mirror has two faces, he like gets really excited <laughs> and comes running because well, he loves it. <laughs> but that's awesome. so, it was my first one. I need to um, watch it. It's, oh, it's, I mean, heartily recommend like it's just lovely it's um Barbara, so yeah exactly i mean and she and of course she sings of course her style is impeccable the whole time wow it's just great like even when she's trying to be like frumpy i'm like i would wear that oversized velvet shapeless dress in a heartbeat thank you very much barbara like it's gorgeous <laughs> don't even act like you're not rocking it right now um my second one is funny face which is 57 <laughs> This is kind of a silly cover, but um, I, again, watched this movie as a child and I love the, it's um, Audrey Hepburn and Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn is this like very serious girl who gets thrown into this modeling gig for basically like Vogue and um, becomes their cover girl and she just thinks it's all vapid and ridiculous but she wants to go to France to uh, talk with um, philosophers and people who um, em empathicalists or whatever sh whatever they're called but anyway so there's lots of singing lots of dancing lots of gorgeous costumes Givenchy um, as he did with most of Audrey's films designed all the costumes um, it takes place around the fashion industry. I went to school for fashion, so that always spoke to me. Um, and then Fred Astaire and Audrey dance and sing, and it's great. It's just Classic. lovely. And then my last one, <laughs> I was trying to pick a wide range that, like, oh, this one's silly, but I could also watch it literally any time, and that is From Prada to Nada, which is uh, 2011. Um, modern day adaptation of Sense and Sensibility nice. with Alexa Vega and Camilla Bell. I it's, have not seen this. It's great. Either. It's so fun. I actually think it's like, it is cheesy for sure, but I also think it's well done. Mm -hmm. um, it is, I mean, it's Sense and Sensibility. So it's great. It's these two girls, they live in, um, like <laughs> they live in, I guess, Beverly Hills. And then their dad dies and you know they are going to lose everything so they have to move to east la which is right on the border and they live with this woman who uh i think it's their aunt like their mom's sister or something and so it's you know everyone knows the story of sense and sensibility but it's great the music is fun it's um got so it has lots of like um kind of spanish style music and some really fun um uh there's like a great scene where there's like this um I think a Mexican Independence Day party oh. and people are like dressed up in, in um, cultural costumes, like cultural costumes from Mexico and to celebrate. And it's just like super fun. And I love it so much. So from Prada to Nada. So I will check fun. it out. I do. I love Alexa Vega. I think she's great. She is. She and her husband have like a vlogging channel. Yes, I've totally seen it. And their little two little boys are so cute. So cute. Oh, so cute. Yeah, they're great. All righty. The next category that we move on to, it will not come as a surprise, <laughs> is books. Um, 
So I'll just get the uh, proverbial elephant in the room out of the way. Wives and daughters, here it is. <laughs> yes. Shocker. Oh my gosh, Kate. No way. Wives and daughters? <laughs> Stop being so unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It has to be here though. It has to. <laughs> it, it had to. Yes. Yeah. I just find it incredibly comforting because there is lots of time spent in homes. That's, that's like, I think huh. something that people who don't like classics use as a critique of classics. Like it's just a bunch of people in houses, but I love that. <laughs> like, I love being in a house myself. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, it's it just, very, very gentle. You do have some uh, kind of twists and turns that happen in it, but it's just told in such a friendly, um, approachable, gentle way. And the characters are near and dear to me. And uh, it's a very much a spring read. So I crave it every spring. And uh, yes, so I had to talk about Wives and Daughters. Um, then another <laughs> author that includes many cozy domestic scenes is Rosamond Pilcher or Rosamond oh. Pilcher. I know. Rosamond. Anyway, we'll go with yeah. Rosamond Pilcher. <laughs> yeah. um, I've heard it both ways. I know. <laughs> uh, and a lot of her books take place in Scotland and there's tea drinking and letter writing and going on walks in beautiful weather while you contemplate your feelings. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love that. Uh, AKA yeah. my life. Yes. No, and I'm they kidding. are <laughs> long too, right? They're long and I love that. That's a chunky one. Coming home is, um, I can't believe it. It's almost a thousand pages. This does not look oh, almost wow. a thousand pages. Um, oh. But it's, I, oh. I love the length because if you like the writing style, it's not going to feel mm -hmm. overwhelming to read that much. Um, so I actually have had a real hankering to reread Coming Home. So I'm hoping this year to pick this up again. I like this and The Shell Seekers by her equally. Um, and also a little bonus that I like is there's usually some arts and culture incorporated, like the characters enjoying painting or reading, something mm -hmm. like that. But um, And handicraft is usually in there like knitting or um, crocheting or sewing something. Highly enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, the Betsy Tacy series <laughs> by Modern Lovelace. Um, these definitely have the nostalgia factor for me because I read these growing up, um, but they're also just really darn good books. Um, so I still like them now. Uh, and I think what I find so comforting about this series in particular are all of the characters, the whole cast of mm -hmm. characters. They all feel unique they feel um, different from, you don't get, I never get, I never get the characters mixed up with other ones. Like, who is that? No, they all feel distinct. Um, and they just bring a lot of life and pizzazz to the story. They really make it come alive. Um, so yes, Betsy Tacy, that was my third one. Um, <laughs> so Taylor, do you have your, your three books? Yes. I mean, one of them's already been revealed. Um, <laughs> and it's this it's Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams by my beloved Susan Branch um this is not how I got into Susan Branch I discovered her be, like through her blog which like I said it's almost like reading a cozy book in and of itself but it's full of like lots of pictures and her like adorable illustration and stuff so mm -hmm. highly recommend but um she has like a a trilogy of kind of like autobiographical books about her life and um how she kind of like became herself and I've only read two of them so far and this one is like far and away my favorite um it's about how she um is getting over a really messy divorce and she just feels called to the island of Martha's Vineyard um and I mean I mean a, don't I mean, we all oh. be called to yeah um, <laughs> but she like it's like all mysterious and she doesn't really know why um she grew up in California so it's like on the other side of the world almost wow. from like her family and friends and everything she's ever known but she leaves everything behind jumps on a plane moves to Martha's Vineyard and finds this tiny little cottage and so quaint yeah um <laughs> And 
you know, it's not in the best state when she gets it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's kind of about, like you were saying, Kate, how you find like stories about home and houses so cozy and life softening. Mm -hmm. I'm totally the same way. And this to me is about like finding home in terms of mental health and like her happiness and stuff when she gets here, but she like, restores the house um and like starts her life over and it's just so cozy and great and it's full of hold on like super cute pictures and photography like she makes every page like gorgeous and like a visual treat like an, her actual and journal it's just so it is yeah it's like yeah. reading a super cozy diary and there's like cool. she's very it feels very real because like she's sharing with you that she was like really sad during this time mm-hmm. but this is like ultimate life softener inspiration because she's finding things to like surround herself with from like cats to mashed potatoes to like quilts <laughs> um and art and stuff to like to bring herself summer, joy actually. so yeah it is yeah Mashed potato, I, yeah. I carry this book around yeah and tater tots she loves tater tots too, <laughs> so I feel like that any sort of potatoes very trustworthy yeah <laughs> and then the next one is ugh, really heavy it's Feast by Nigella Lawson uh to whom I am fanatically devoted uh but this is my favorite of all of her cookbooks because it's just like reading it is like the bookish equivalent to me of like eating comfort food. Like this is a this is a cookbook of comfort food to me. Like she splits it up into various like kinds of feasts that you can have. So it starts with Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then it goes through like different holidays, but also just like making occasions out of not occasions like um the food that you eat in the kitchen at like three in the morning when you just need to be comforted um and that kind of stuff so this book like reminds me of how restorative like cooking and food can be and mm. I could just yeah. like read it straight through like a novel I just that's I just cool love it. so cool. and it's so a like workout, my... so then you <laughs> so then you don't feel <laughs> bad about making the food yeah. <laughs> exactly it's exercise that book is exercise I'm just saying yeah. um and then my last one is this is like a a stand-in for the audiobook version of it so this is my collection of Winnie the Pooh stories that I've had since I was a kid but what I'm actually talking about is the like audiobooks of Winnie the Pooh that are read by Peter Dennis um oh. yeah To me, he just, like, represents each of these characters so wonderfully, and he brings out all of their, like, whimsy and humor, and there's, like, little sound effects um, in the background sometimes that just make you feel like you're in the Hundred Acre Wood, and you can just completely escape, and yeah, I just think Winnie the Pooh is so uplifting and life-softening, because like I said, it's funny, like, it doesn't take itself super seriously, but at the same time, it like gives you hope that, you know, if you have like friends and love and joy, it's all going to be okay. So yeah, that's my last book. Wonderful. Wonderful. All righty, Morgan. I don't think I've ever listened to that. Um, any of the Winnie the Pooh on audiobook, but I might have to look those up because yes. that sounds great. Yes. So good. Um, so I 100% totally cheated. Absolutely. I picked, I, (laughs) I picked one singular book and then basically categories of other books. Um, but whatever, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so the first book slash category is, um, Pride and Prejudice for me, which I don't have a, I mean, I own a physical copy of Pride and Prejudice. I own probably like 15 but I did not grab that. Um, I reread that probably every other year. 
I just like, I love it. It's nice. You know what they're going to say. I really love the audiobook version um, that um, Rosalind Pike yeah. narrates. Oh. I think it's lovely. Um, it I'm, yeah, right. It, and I'm listening to it right now, actually, currently. Um, I mean, not while we're on this call. That would be pretty <laughs> impressive. But I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, Maybe. just like, I wasn't sure if you guys were really interesting enough. So I had to have my <laughs> audiobook going in the other ear. It's all thing. understandable. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> um, <laughs> but then the other kind of element to that is I always, I read a lot of Jane Austen retellings Ooh. and the Pride and Prejudice ones first and foremost are the most um, easily accessible. Like there's, they're everywhere <laughs> and there's like a gajillion of them, but um, a couple of my favorites are what I brought to show. These are probably. Again, probably no one has ever even heard of these. But my first favorite that I'm retelling of Pride and Prejudice, specifically, that I've read so many times, is First Impressions by Deborah White Smith. Ooh. Um, this is, I found this, it's like a very old um, Christian book series that I found at the library one time and then quickly went out and bought all of them because she has all of Jane Austen's novels. Um, in this and it's they take place in Texas which because I'm from Texas I'm particularly fond of things that take place in Texas and um it's just it's Pride and Prejudice but in modern day and in Texas and it's great and I love it um and then the other one I have is more of I feel like it's marketed to teens I would call it more of like an upper middle grade book this cover is intense everyone get ready I'm ready uh -oh. <laughs> just like her face <laughs> so this, hello oh, <laughs> um, does some fairy tale retellings right yes she okay. does I've seen that. I yes I love Ginny James I've read probably I've, almost everything she's written just because I think her writing she is very bubbly she is bubbly as a human and her writing style is bubbly as well so it comes across on the page this is their um in high school again to me the writing is a little bit young um, so I would like upper middle grade, even though they're in high school, I think, but it's just super fun. And it's Chloe and, and Tyler, Taylor. Oh, it's Chloe and Taylor, um, who Ooh. are the main characters. And it's just, it's so cute. Again, I've read this. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've read this because I just think it's fun. And it's so like, I love her writing style so much. And then the story of Pride of Prejudice is so great. So I've read it countless times. So that was my first book nice I just I even, like though, I just talk, even yeah, though I just good. talked about three books I love it the Go second it. one the second one is a um an audiobook specifically so I don't have a physical copy of it but it's Beard Science by Penny Reed has anybody have the, either the of you guys heard of Penny Reed like they're no. like cross stitch right yes they do okay. so seen. they are yeah they're I feel like she is another one of my she's amazing she does what I would call pretty conventional like contemporary romance so there's a little bit of steaminess to them but beard science is it's so the audiobook is so well done first of all and it's two like it's a guy and a girl so one the guy narrates Cletus's perspective and the girl narrates Jen's and it's just Cletus is this really um offbeat guy who nobody understands and who's like very like socially awkward but obviously a genius and nobody like everyone is a little bit either a little bit scared of him or like eh, he's weird and then Jen is this really really sweet um woman who is a baker like she works at this bakery but she actually has very um overbearing manipulative parents who she's kind of even though she's very much an adult I think she's probably like 27 or 28 in the book but she's just kind of like has been under their thumb and they run her life. So Cletus helps her grow a backbone, basically. And then she um, helps Cletus. She's like blackmailing him with some information. So she's like, I won't blackmail you if you help me with stuff. But then, of course, they fall in love. And it's lovely. And she like sees him for the great person that he is. And he just is head over heels for her. And it's so, Penny Reed is very, fun. like, it's super funny. The dialogue is great. And it's just, the audiobook is so wonderful and i love i've listened to beard science also couldn't tell you how many times so that one was wonderful 
if you like romance, highly recommend Penny Reed. And then the last one is a book series. And I, um, this is, it's kind of like a romantic mystery series. Again, probably nobody else would consider it life stopping but me, but <laughs> it is D. And I bought two books out because there was a cover change halfway in the middle of the series. And I felt like both of them needed to be represented. So it's the um, High Heels Mystery Series by Gemma Halliday. This is the first book, Spying in High Heels. And then this is, who knows what number this is. This is a danger in high heels. And again, there's a fashion element to this. Um, The main character, Maddie Springer, it's like a cozy mystery. So she stumbles across a dead body like you do. And then she (laughs) has to- Was she jogging when it happened? No, she was not. What What was she doing? Now I can't even remember. That's funny. I read a lot of cozy mysteries and all of them, right. You know, I, yeah. In cozy mysteries, like literally (laughs) anything, anywhere. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, uh, in this one, so she's a shoe designer, high heels. Um, and she is, uh, (laughs) so she stumbles across this dead body, you know, the police show up, she's a suspect for a little while, but then she's cleared. But then of course the police officer is, very hot and you know all about her and uh oh it's her oh I remember it's her boyfriend it's her boyfriend at the time who he disappears he disappears but then they find I mean he's not dead he disappears but then like in her searching she's convinced he's like stepping out on her and so she goes to his house to investigate and finds all this stuff and then stumbles across the dead body and it's this whole thing So, but then in the meantime, like she's developing this kind of relationship with Ramirez and her boyfriend turns out to be a scumbag and it's a whole thing. Um, So the series literally follows them throughout, like every book is a different mystery and they get married. Eventually one of the books is about their wedding, their wedding cake um, designer, decorator, baker is dead. They have to figure out why, of course, (laughs) right before their wedding. And then um, they have twins. And so then it's like her juggling being a mom to twins and then also still solving these mysteries. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I love them so much. And I've reread the whole series probably about three or four times. And I think there's like 12 books now. So I think it's fun when you can find uh, like book series that has like you're interested in fashion that has your kind of specific yes. interest embedded oh, in yeah. it. Oh, and she graduate she went to the same fashion school that I did that was actually like when I first discovered the series I was like oh, I went to that school <laughs> that's so <laughs> that's fun so yeah very fun um the next category that we have is music which I particularly appreciate because if you sometimes you know you don't you can't sit down and read a book and sometimes your brain right you can't focus on a book so it's nice to just have on some nice music so the yeah. first is the 2005 Pride and Prejudice soundtrack. I just, I'm never tired of it. I'm just, I'm not. And the the Sculptures of Pemberley track particularly, like. Oh, yeah. It gets you. It does. It's like, it pulls at something inside of you. <laughs> and you're like, it takes oh. you to another place. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So it's just the perfect amount, like emotional, but not too much. Mm-hmm. But then in a completely different vein, so Morgan, how you were saying, I don't know if other people would find this life softening. This one, <laughs> I don't know if this one stresses my husband out and he's like, can we not have this on? So oh, no. a lot. And that is the 2011 Jane Eyre soundtrack. So I have oh. to be in my like Victober, like okay. autumn, cozy winter mindset, but I just, oh, it brings so much atmosphere to reading, especially if I'm reading something like suspense oriented. Oh, I just love it because it's haunting and just very all encompassing while you're listening to it. You just feel like you are on those moors wandering. Um, The bad moors in that instance. (laughs) I was about to say, is that the version with Michael Fassbender? Yeah. Is that the 2011 version? It's so pretty. It is so pretty. I, it's, I would have said before the 2006 Jane Eyre was definitely my favorite, 
But the the more I watch the 2011 one, the more it like really like pulls me in. Yeah, I, I love need, it. I need to watch that one again because actually I have a controversial opinion about it because Michael Fassbender creeps me out. So <laughs> I don't <laughs> love that version, but it's been a long time since I've watched it and uh, I should probably give it another try. He does not creep me <laughs> out. No. Kate's like, I mean, in my way. <laughs> Rochester is sometimes a little bit creepy. Right. So you don't necessarily want to be totally comfortable with Rochester. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. weird. He's got some problems. <laughs> I mean, and He's this got is a not a spoiler. Problems. Just if you know, you know, like fortune teller. Yeah, that is really what I'm thinking of. I'm just like, yeah. if I if um, I had been Jane in that situation, I would have been like, no. It makes me so like, angry, honestly. Mm-hmm. Every time I'm yeah. like, really? Totally. I'm just gonna go back to my school and teach. <laughs> right. It's yeah. like this not worth it. It's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I don't care how cute he is, get out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, mm-hmm. and then the la- lastly is a singer, and that is Nina Simone. I can still remember the first moment that I ever heard one of her songs, and it is um, a really long version of a song called Wild is the Wind, and it was on a trailer for So Not a Kate-like brand of movie, Revolutionary Road with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Like, you're going to want to die and, like... <laughs> just melt away into a hole of nothing like after watching so yeah, I've never watched it but I thank it for putting this song on the movie trailer and I was like who is this singing you know instantly googling like what is that song and she was this amazing soul singer from like the 50s through the 60s and 70s I think it's kind of her, her reign um and she just has she has a really interesting voice it is almost kind of androgynous sounding, like it's not really obvious that it's a woman singing at first, but yeah. there's this real gravi- gravelly kind of quality to it and um, just put so much feeling and oomph into her, um, into her songs. And there, some of them are really weird. Like there's a song called Be My Husband. Um, I've heard that one. Yes. Yeah. And I don't think I've heard women. any of these. Oh, or I even, I don't think I even know who this is. I'm going to have yeah. to look this person up. <laughs> you don't have to look her up. I mean, she was outstanding. Um, so yes, especially love to listen to her when I am cooking. I find it very soothing. Like Nina's singing to me. It's going to be okay. <laughs> You're stirring here. Yeah. You know? Yes, Nina. Uh, I love it. Yes. Um, Taylor, what are your music selections? All right, this is where I mega cheated, Morgan. So, (laughs) you know, I was like, I got to pick my moment. And when I got to the music and I was like, I literally was like, I can't do this. Like, I cannot pick only three. So um, I'm just going to go through this really quickly with like no description whatsoever because I just have to like list things. Okay, (laughs) so I did what Morgan did with books and I split this into (laughs) three categories. Love it. So when I need life softening music I mean all music is life softening to me like I am a Spotify junkie <laughs> music is my life like as Lady Catherine says if I had ever learned I'd be a great proficient uh but yeah so my first category is soft jazz and the like so like Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, Stacey Kent etc so nice. everything anything of that nature um yeah it just wow. makes me feel like soothed and like kind of like Nina where you're just like I can groove I can chill yeah. it's fine <laughs> these beats are good okay and then um the second category is Disney slash musicals soundtracks oh support yeah. support yeah. because that just takes me back to like being a kid where like all I did was walk around in like old slips and nightgowns of my grandmother's which I <laughs> like elegant dresses and I just like watch the Ten Commandments all day like oh my gosh I was not a normal kid okay <laughs> but I did those exact same things though this is why I'm laughing oh, so hard 100% yeah. 
no okay and while we're on the subject of me in my grandmother's old nightgowns I would also get chairs from the dining room and make like what I pretended was like a Bedouin fort and I would just sit in there and watch the Ten Commandments be like I live in Midian <laughs> like I'm just- oh my gosh I did something yeah. shockingly similar me and my two Dude. sisters this like often wow. so you're not alone <laughs> like good. I'm we're good. We're fully, fully identified with this <laughs> Yeah, not that the Ten Commandments is even a musical, so I, but like the Prince of Egypt, whatever, like things like my uh, also Lady, great, yes, <laughs> or Into the Woods or Mary Poppins. Like, if I put on Mary Poppins soundtrack, I just instantly feel better. Mm-hmm. Like, it just yes. it makes my heart happy, it pleases my inner child, and reminds me that like you can always escape with musicals and mm-hmm. Disney magic. So, that's the second mm-hmm. category. And then the last category is like these titles of the categories, warm acoustic slash folk music, such as like Ray LaMontagne, um, John Mayer, Alexi Murdoch, or just like, I have a bunch of like instrumental acoustic guitar playlists on Spotify (laughs) where I'm just like, I want to pretend I'm in the woods, like drinking (laughs) coffee. (laughs) Yeah, those are all my- Up and down trees. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) okay i'm done now i promise no more no i i, I like love it that. I that's like great oh. all righty morgan okay so i am not a big music person like i don't dislike music i just don't ever <laughs> think about it or turn to it there's so there's a couple things that I'm like okay yes like I turned to this and I've actually gotten to be more of a music person since Leland was born because um Ben is a big music person Ben my husband and Leland takes after him and so like I'll be trying to listen to like an audiobook or a podcast or something while I'm doing something and Leland gets so angry and he'll start throwing a fit until I turn music on and so then, <laughs> so it's like okay so we listen to music a lot more now um, but I do have a couple things. I tend to like more, um, things that make me, uh, like that I can sing along to first and foremost has to be something I can sing along to. And then, um, like upbeat, I'm like, get excited, get it. Like, like my cooking music is like, like eighties hair bands probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I'm, and I don't, I mean, I don't really cook. So that's my cooking music. I'm like making hamburger helper in my kitchen, jamming out to some eighties tunes. But, um, so what I picked, um, are Phil Collins because I love everything that Phil Collins does. His songs make me happy. His later stuff makes me happy. His early stuff makes me happy. His Tarzan stuff makes me happy. Tarzan. I love Phil Collins. Kate, I watched that video that you sent 15,000 times and, and sent it to so many people because I thought it was so funny. It's just so funny. It's like, this is way too good for a Disney soundtrack. Like, you know, this is a movie made about guys raised by monkeys. Exactly. Uh, that sounds like it's so transcendental. Funny. It's true. <laughs> it is. I will, um, so I will good. link that video. In you the- definitely should because I literally, and like, I watched just it so many like- times. The only other Disney soundtrack made exclusively by an artist was like the Spirit soundtrack by Brian Adams. Oh. I love Brian. Well, Adams. didn't um, well, Lion King? Wasn't Lion King all Elton John? The original it was. Lion King. I didn't. That's another. I think maybe not. Maybe it was. I also. I I'm, here's the thing. I like the Spirit soundtrack too. I'm not gonna lie. Brian when that Adams first came out, I was into it. Love. All right. Sorry. No. No offense. My other one true loves. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know who until literally just this moment I had no idea who did the soundtrack I just liked the song oh man <laughs> so um the second one is also musicals for me I any musicals really um I love I watched a lot of as a child um like the old Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals anything from like the 40s and 50s um so um, I know all of the words to those songs. I tend to blare them and sing along. And me and my sisters would do musical dance numbers to them and pretend to be tap dancing. Yes. Whole thing, whole thing. <laughs> also in our in our slips and nineties, like not ours because ours had yeah. you know the Lion King on them or something stupid. But our yeah. mother's fancy ones. You had to look elegant. Um, 
Exactly. So, um, I mean, I wanted to be like Ginger Rogers. How else was I supposed to be like Ginger Rogers? I, that was the only way. <laughs> um, and then the last one for me is Cher. Because I really like Cher. I like her deeper voice. I think her style is crazy. And almost all of her songs just like make me feel like girl power. So yes. those yeah. are my three. Yeah. Oh, I'd like, now I want to listen to some Cher. You know, actually who I think my Cher is, is Whitney Houston. Oh, I mean. Very good. Yes, of course. Of course. Ben is a big Whitney Houston fan. (laughs) Like pretty obsessed, actually. (laughs) I like Ben seems to have such a like wide range of interests. I love it. Ben has a very wide range of interests. He's a very um, interesting person. Controversial and interesting. That's one of the reasons (laughs) I married him. (laughs) excitement that's your room. exactly controversial and interesting and that's the <laughs> why I married him listen that's actually probably anybody that has met Ben that's their review of him controversial and interesting <laughs> so not forgettable I mean yeah. I don't think so but I don't know <laughs> how you would he's crazy oh, I love it